Right now, a lot of attention is focused on the Obamacare standoff and the government shutdown. As usual, this debate has been framed as a left versus right issue. And the American people who just one month ago united in opposition to an impending attack on Syria have divided themselves down this artificial line and have resumed their bickering in earnest. That's not to say that there's nothing to bicker about. There are real reasons to be angry here. Nor is this an appeal for moderation or bipartisanship. A compromise between horse manure and cow manure. Still manure. This becomes much clearer once you put the furlough circus in its proper context. The Democrats and the Republicans are both trying to spin the narrative of this drama to make the other side look dishonest and irresponsible, while painting themselves as heroes trying to defend you, their beloved constituency. And some of you are falling for it. Come on. If Congress cared about you and your freedom, how is it that these same degenerate control freaks passed the NDAA of 2012 and 2013, granting the military the power to detain anyone anywhere in the world and imprison them indefinitely without trial? Where was their righteous indignation then? And these laws are still on the books. Why didn't Congress defund the NDAA or the Patriot Act? Likewise, if Obama cares so much about your well-being, why did he sign those bills into law? He had the power to veto them, but he didn't. He's willing to play hardball, even to the point of a government shutdown, to protect his signature health care bill. But military detention without due process? Well, they didn't want to ruffle any feathers over something so trivial. And where were these valiant congressmen, these defenders of liberty, when it was time to take a stand against the NSA's domestic spying program? Did they filibuster then? You know, I don't seem to remember hearing anything about that, do you? There was no outrage, no talk of shutting down the government as Obama massively expanded the drone program, killing thousands of civilian non-combatants in countries that we're not even at war with. There was no talk of impeachment even after it was revealed that Obama has his own private kill list, and then he claims the right to assassinate people on that list without trial, even American citizens on American soil, if he decides that they're a threat. No, of course not, because on those issues, the Democrats and the Republicans are in full agreement. Listen, let's not fool ourselves. What we're seeing right now is not a government shutdown. 800,000 workers were furloughed and a lot of public spaces were blocked off. But Congress didn't put their own paychecks on hold. Obama didn't get kicked out of his plush presidential palace. Now, we wouldn't want to treat our precious ruling class like that, now would we? It's the little guys that should pay the consequences. It's the workers who should feel the pain. These politicians don't care about you. This little political hissy fit we're watching unfold is a public relations stunt designed to turn the left and the right against each other and to keep you from coming to terms with the fact that the United States government is out of control. The U.S. government needs to be shut down for real, not temporarily, not some federally mandated mass layoff, not some Tea Party 2.0. This is a police state that is engaged in wars of aggression all over the planet. It has made itself an enemy of the people in every sense of the word. Rather than arguing over how to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic, it's time to come to terms with the fact that this ship is sinking. The United States government is a failed state. Trying to get justice through elections or petitions is like trying to remodel a termite-eaten, roach-infested crack house. Nothing is going to change until the corporations and the banking cartels that control the system are brought into account. And we've got no chance of bringing them into account unless we form a unified front. How do we form a unified front? Put aside the wedge issues, drop this petty left-right bickering, and focus on the three things that any sane person can agree on. That these wars of aggression and this war against the people has got to stop, and that any institution which supports or profits from these wars must be dismantled. That's the common ground. That's the unifying idea that will allow the political and ideological factions to join forces against our common enemy. It's time to use that unifying idea to build a network of resistance, a decentralized web of communication and cooperation that can bring these criminals to their knees. This is not just an abstract idea. You've already proven that it can be done. In September of 2013, the left and the right unified and stopped the attack on Syria. That was a huge victory. You altered the course of history there. But make no mistake, this is not over. The powers that be will regroup. They will try another angle. We've got to be ready when they do.